morning that who is like the Lord? Who is like the Lord? Say, who is like the Lord? Hey, nobody. Who is like the Lord? Who is like the Lord? Oh, no, 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 no. nobody. Who is, who is like, like the Lord? Nobody. Nobody. Who is like the Lord? Who is like the Lord? And I just want to welcome you guys to church this morning. Today you have another day, another chance to be loved by God and to love people because God loves you. And I think about that every day that I wake up, that thank you God for giving me another chance. And today you have another chance to meet with God today, not just to be with your friends at church, because sometimes we get confused. But you're here to meet Jesus, so welcome. So this is a scripture that I read this morning. But you do not know what will happen tomorrow. Your life is like a mist. You see it for a short time, but then it goes away. And that means that today, God said, today you have this day, another chance, another opportunity. So thank you so much, Lord God, that we have another opportunity. So let me pray. In Jesus' name, 
Thank you so much, Lord, for waking us up this morning, that honestly, we have another chance to be loved by you, that we have another chance to love others because we are loved by you. We know the love of God, so let us love others just as, we, just as you love us. Thank you for church today. Thank you for everything that's going to happen, for every moment that you're going to meet with us this morning, for everything you're going to lay in our hearts, and for everything that we're going to take out into the world. I pray for everybody who comes up here and everyone who's sitting down, and I pray, Lord God, that we meet with you today. And and to our online congregation, we welcome you. And yes, have an amazing service today. And remember, you're here to meet Jesus because you have another chance to be loved by him. Have a good service. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate God for another chance to be loved by him? Hallelujah. Please, can you find someone and congratulate them and say another chance to be loved? Another chance. I, that really resonated with me another chance it means you are alive you are well you can sing you can stand you can testify another chance another day another hope another opportunity yes that is what we have this morning oh yes we stand in a place of victory a place where God has brought us to to thank him someone needs to look back and thank God for everything that he has done that's what we're going to start by doing this morning hallelujah now we're here, another chance. Ah. Looking back on where we've come from, someone sing and testify, sing and testify. Because of you and nothing we've done to deserve the love and mercy. To deserve the love and mercy you showed. Your grace, your grace was strong enough to pick us up, and you made a way. Who is testifying this morning? You made a way for me. I'm standing here. I am standing here only because you. You made a way. You. You. Thank you, Lord. Oh, when our backs were against the wall. When our backs were against the wall. And it looked. And it looked as if it was But God another opportunity, another chance to, for him to be praised. And we're standing oh, yes. only because you made a way. This morning we celebrate all the mountains he has moved. Why you choose to be merciful? Why you choose to be gracious, oh God? 
For God, but for God, but for God, but for God, where would I be? Where would you be? I am standing, I am standing here. Father Lord, you move Mount Sharabosh, Kandarabazantra, you move mountains. What is too difficult with you, God? You move mountains. Day after day, now you move mountains. You cause walls to fall. Ha! Hey! You cause walls to fall.
So I'm standing here only, singularly only because there is no other reason why I'm here. When I look at all the miracles you've done, when I look out, the enemy came at me as a flood. And Lord, are you lifted up a standard against the enemy? I am only standing. I'm only clapping. I'm only singing. I'm only rejoicing because you made a way. And what a God you are. What a mighty God you are. This morning, we celebrate what you did on the cross. All the exchanges, sadness for joy. Poverty for breakthroughs, depression for overjoy. All that exchange was done on the cross of Calvary. Can we celebrate the cross of Calvary? He said, It is finished, it is finished, it is finished. It is finished, church. It is finished. We stand in the victory. He has made a way, you made that way over 2,000 years ago. Finished it on the cross finished it on the cross the exchange is done it is perfect so we thank you for the cross Join the 
worthy is that land. Worthy is he to receive all the glory, to receive all the worship, to receive all the honor. Worthy is that land that was slain. Someone worshiped him this morning. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, Amen, blessings, glory, honor, and power be unto him who sits on the throne. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Worthy is he to receive all the glory. Worthy is he to open the book and to remove the seal thereof. Worthy is he to be worshipped. Worthy is he to be adored. Worthy is he to be lifted up. Worthy is he to be magnified. Worthy is that lamb. Worthy is that lamb. Worthy is that lamb. Oh, worthy is the lamb.
and I'm here to facilitate the prayer for revival for today. Um, as we may or may not know, today is International Women's Day across the world. And we're going to be praying today using women as a point of contact for our prayers. Whilst we're still praying for revival and we're praying for every single person, but we're praying in particular for women. And women, as you know, play a very important role in society. They nurture, they guide, they strengthen, they comfort, they love. Women can be all-round assistants, cab drivers, monster slayers, dragon slayers, whatever they're required to do. Women generally stand in the gap and do all that is required. And we just want to pray for them today because when we, when we look in the Word, when we look at Romans 8, verse 32 in the NIV version, it says, He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? And that particular chapter just talks about how God is a giver, God gave, God gave his son, and God will give us all things. And the most important gift any woman can receive is the gift of salvation. And that's what we're going to be praying for this morning. And yeah, actually, let's just start with that. So Father, we come before you this morning, praying for everybody, but using all women as a point of contact. Father, the gift of your son to restore us to you is a special gift that you gave to us, freely for everybody to receive. And Father, this morning we're praying for women who don't know you across the world, that by the power of your Holy Spirit today, they will receive that gift of salvation. They will receive that gift of knowing you, that gift of being restored back to you by the power of your Holy Spirit, that they will receive the love that you freely gave and poured out for us when you gave your son as the one-time sacrifice to bring us back to you. So Father, for women who know you, draw them closer into an intimate relationship with you. But for those who don't, reveal yourself to them today, Father, in ways that only you can. Let them hear you, let them see you, let them encounter your love. Let them have a question in their heart that says, who is this God? I must know him. And Father, as they do so, bring these women to you that they may be saved, that they may be saved and restored to a life of eternity with you. And next, I'd like us to pray for them to be filled by the Spirit. Because when we are filled by the Holy Spirit and we're led by the Holy Spirit, we are filled to the overflow with God's love. And then that love flows out of us to all the people we meet. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
And so can we just pray for all women to be filled and led by the Holy Spirit. Father, thank you for your gift once again of the Holy Spirit. You gave us your son and you didn't just stop there. You gave us your Holy Spirit. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is alive in us, given to us as a gift to empower us, strengthen us, teach us, guide us, be our standby, be our light, be our comforter, be our helper, be our intercessor. Father, this morning, please lead us, fill us by your Holy Spirit. And as you do so, Father, fill us with your love, that your love may flow out of every woman to every single person she meets, that your love may be encountered so that when they meet these women, Father, they don't meet human beings, they meet you. They encounter your love. They encounter that same love that loved us so much that you couldn't bear to be apart from us, that you gave all of yourself that you gave all of yourself to restore us to you. Father, strengthen us, lead us by your Holy Spirit. And then we're also going to be praying for women because they've been saved by God and led by the Spirit to be powerful intercessors. Things happen when women pray. When women come together and pray, the world is changed. So Father, we're asking today for a heart of intercession. Let every single woman realize the power inside of her that comes from you. And then let us rise up in the place of prayer. Let us take hold of everything that we see in the world and change it on our knees, Father. Let us have that heart that says, I will not stand, this will not happen on my watch. We will stand and we will come together and we will pray and we will change the world, Father, because you have given us the authority. You have given us the power. You have given us the name of Jesus Christ. You have given us all that we need to be your ambassadors in this world world, to bring about change in this world. So Father, I pray for a spirit of prayer, a spirit of intercession to land on every single woman, that she may take her place in her home, in her workplace, in her family, Father, and take the place on our knees, Father, that we can bring about change. And then finally, Father, I'm praying for all women all over the world who know you, who are led by you, who are filled by your Holy Spirit to be fearless and bold and courageous and strengthful and strength and and strong father because I almost said strengthful strong because we have the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead inside of us there is nothing that we cannot do we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus so father help us to banish fear and to stand strong in who you are and in who we are in you Father, use women as a powerful instrument in your hands. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Still in that same attitude. Good morning, church. We are now going to spend some time standing in the gap and interceding for the persecuted church. Now we know that the church that we're referring to is not a physical building, but rather our brothers and sisters all over the world who are severely oppressed, some some of them in largely oppressive countries. But we know that we serve a God that is sovereign and that is victorious. Um, Today is International Women's Day, and um, whilst I was preparing, I came across a research carried out by Open Doors which has revealed that millions of women are actually doubly vulnerable to persecution and they are targeted both because of their faith but also because of their gender. And also there are reports you know, of constant abductions and a lot of times the suffering by these women is largely unseen. So this morning we are going to stand in the gap. You know, a few weeks ago, Pastor Aga was demonstrating how when one part of the body suffers, every other part suffers. And so whilst we have the privilege of, you know, serving God freely, we want to stand and pray for our brothers and our sisters. We're especially using our sisters as a point of contact this morning who don't have that same opportunity that we have. So this morning we're going to unite with our brothers using our sisters as a point of contact on this day tagged as the International Women's Day and we draw our inspiration from the words of Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 4, from verses 8 to 9 in the New Living Translation. If I may please have that on the screen, please. I'll read. It says, We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. 
We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. And standing on that scripture this morning, I want us to begin to pray. The first prayer point that we're going to pray this morning, we're going to pray, especially for our sisters, that they might experience the hope of God like never before. The Bible says in Ephesians 1 verse 18, that I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope that he has given to those he has called his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance church can we begin to pray this morning let's pray for hope that our sisters our brothers who are persecuted in those countries will be filled with hope like never before oh the god of hope we call upon you this morning oh god we ask for your hand oh god especially on our sisters oh god we ask oh god that they experience your hope oh god like never before oh god for anyone that might be feeling dejected tired that might be feeling like they're in despair oh god we ask oh god that you would open up your floodgates oh god and you will fill each person that fresh oh god with your hope with your love oh god in the name of jesus the god of love we ask for an overwhelming sense of your love right now oh god in the name of jesus because there is no place lord that we can hide from your love we could go anywhere but your love always finds us oh god oh god we thank you father we give you praise and glory in jesus name and the second point i want us to take this morning is to pray for god's strength for them the bible says in ephesians 3 verse 16 that i pray that from his glorious unlimited resources that he would empower you with inner strength through his spirit let's pray for strength for our sisters using them as a point of contact this morning for all our members of the persecuted church for inner strength for strength like never before to be able to withstand to stand firm in the in the face of persecution in the name of jesus Nenda ikata. Oh God, oh God, we ask, oh God, for divine strength from on high, oh God. Oh God, oh God, oh God, shanda yekerianda. Oh God, we cry out for strength, oh God. Strength like no other, oh God. Riches, oh God, to our brothers, to our sisters, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you are our strength, oh God. And we thank you for divine strength. We thank you for strength like no other, oh God. Thank you for strength like no other, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Please sit down as we listen to seven news. Hi, I'm Lola Daniels, and you're watching Seven News. The next couples weekend away takes place from the 7th to the 10th of May in Warwick. Now this is an amazing opportunity for couples to come together, to connect on a much deeper and intimate level, to nurture and enrich their marriage. This location is in a beautiful place along the banks of the River Avon. And the hotel boasts of exquisite facilities such as a spa and a swimming pool. The total cost for the weekend away is £500 per couple, which is inclusive of accommodation and meals. A non-refundable deposit of £150 is required, and in addition, a payment plan is available. Please note, you can also receive a 5% discount for introducing and referring a couple to Couples Weekend Away. If you would like to attend this event, but you can't afford it, please send an email to tightknots at jesushouse.org.uk. For more information and to register, please visit the link on the screen.
Ladies, the Uncommon Woman Conference is taking place from the 26th to the 28th of March here in Jesus House. The theme for this year is Audacious, Living Fearless. On the 28th of March, on Saturday, there are going to be three breakout sessions that will be hosted simultaneously by three renowned speakers. Ayo Awotona, Increasing Your Digital Footprint. In this session, Ayo will share practical tips and a simple strategy to help you boost your digital impact and influence. Ayo is an author, renowned international speaker and educator who specializes in confidence building for girls and young women. She's the author of the book, A Young Woman's Guide to Seeking God. Kay Lawrence, Mental Wellbeing, The Pain of Shame, The Imposter Complex. In this session, Kay will look at healthy shame versus toxic shame, the manifestation of shame and how to change the script. Kay Lawrence is a highly experienced counselor and clinical supervisor with over 25 years experience. Tayo Salami, how to set up a business. In this session, Tayo will teach on how to start up a business and how to achieve the transformation necessary for them to succeed. Tayo Salami is an experienced business performance coach and strategy development expert with over 25 years experience across services, retail and charity sectors, including Jesus House. She is known for her mantra, good business, less stress. It promises to be a phenomenal event. To register, please follow the link on the screen. The next set of classes for Two Become One will take place on the 17th of April in the boardroom here in Jesus House at 7 p.m. Now these classes run for nine weeks and they're compulsory for anyone who is engaged or getting married in Jesus House. The classes are interactive and practical and equip couples with godly principles and time-tested tools to enable them to have a godly marriage that will last for a lifetime. In order to register for this event, please visit the front of house or send an email to tightknots at jesushouse.org.uk. Gentlemen, this is for you. Please save the date in your diaries for the men's mandate breakfast, which will be taking place on the 25th of April. It promises to be an inspiring event. There's going to be networking. There's also going to be a five-star breakfast and the opportunity to listen to uplifting messages. More details as regards this event will be posted soon. We look forward to seeing you all there. That's it for this week's 7 News. Here is a recap of this week's announcements. You can rewatch 7 News on our website at jesushouse.org.uk. You can also watch it on YouTube. It's also available as a link on the Jesus House newsletter. Remember, we are a social church. You can find us on many of the social media platforms, such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Our handles are at Jesus House London and at Jesus House UK. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the service. Have a lovely week ahead and God bless you all. Amen. Go on. Let's, let's appreciate our Seven News team again. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, we mustn't ever, ever take for granted what it is that we experience, particularly on Sundays. It's something we experience every day, but particularly on Sundays when we come together. And I'm talking about the privilege of coming to worship God Almighty. So can somebody please appreciate our God? Please appreciate the privilege that we have in God. Let's not take it for granted, ladies and gentlemen. 
You know, the Bible talks about a God who the hosts of heaven bow down before. You and I have a privilege to come into his presence, into his presence by the blood of Jesus. Please, let's not take it for granted. Can somebody appreciate God this morning? We're just saying, Lord, we're grateful. We're grateful. What a privilege we have in you. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blood that has made a way for us, oh God. Oh, thank you. And Father, may each one of us encounter your holy presence today. Let our lives be changed, oh God. We bless you, everlasting Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible records a very phenomenal event that took place thousands of years ago. It was such a phenomenal event. It changed the course of humanity. I, I kid you not that apart from the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, this was the, probably the most fundamental event that ever took place in the history of humanity. Should I tell you what it is that happened that changed the course of humanity? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, reading the New Living Translation, it says, so the Lord caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Verse 22, then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he brought her to the man. Verse 23, and this is how you know how phenomenal it was. The Bible says that the man called Adam, he exclaimed and said, at last. Can somebody please let me scream at last. You know, when somebody says at last, it means something tangible has happened. And what was his exclamation? That God had made this wonderful person called a woman. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we celebrate women all over the world. You guys, yeah, please. You see, you guys, you, you're not like Adam. You do not appreciate the specimen, the wonderful specimen sitting next to you. The incredible, the incredible... Uh, uh, you still don't understand. Okay, if you don't understand, let me appreciate the wonderful woman that is in front of me and the wonderful woman that is next to me. You guys still don't understand. Can somebody appreciate the woman that is next to you? If you're a woman, appreciate the other woman that is next to you. The wonderful masterpiece of God. The wonderful creation of... Please, can, can I appreciate you? Can I appreciate you? God bless you. 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 Can somebody, is, isn't somebody appreciating you? Oh, I see, you're afraid to hug each other. I see, I see, I see, I see. I see. Ladies and gentlemen, on, on a serious note, it is International Women's Day. And it's a day that all over the world, we want to celebrate women folk. Um, so many things have been said about women. But you know one thing I always say? There's no living being that exists without having come through a woman. And that just tells us how important every single woman is. But then, like has been said, Morenike said, uh, um, 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 Lyde said, that, 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 that women are actually quite incredible humans in many ways. Strong, passionate, inspirational, energetic, you know, I, I could say many things, but should I tell you what I think particularly? I think that women are particularly transformational. The impact that they have on us men particularly. So I'm going to ask every man in this place to please rise up, every man, every man. And please, can we celebrate every single woman, every single woman? Go on, go on, gentlemen, please celebrate all the women around you. Ladies, we are grateful for your lives. Thankful to God for who you are. Brothers, I'm sorry, uh, sisters, wives, please, please remain standing, gentlemen. Please remain standing. Please, we're celebrating our wives, we're celebrating our mothers, we're celebrating our sisters, we're celebrating our colleagues. Thank you for who you are. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. 
And gentlemen, whilst you are standing, please, I, I, I'd like us to pray for every single woman. And uh, if you're a woman, please join us as we pray for other women. And our prayer is very simple this morning. That God will make each one of you to become who you, he created you to be. Every single woman under the sound of my voice, whether you're here, whether you're listening, our prayer is that the God who created you will bring you to that place that he planned and purposed for you. None of you will be less than what God designed for you. Go on, gentlemen, can we pray that prayer for all our women folk? And ladies, please pray for each other. Pray for your sisters that you will become who God created you to be. Nothing less, nothing less, nothing less. Wherever you are, God will take you to that place of fulfillment, that place of purpose. You will become the wife God designed you to be. You will become the mother God designed you to be. You'll be the sister, the helper. Everything that God had planned for you, my sister, you will become in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, oh God. You said, oh God, concerning your, your masterpiece, wonderfully and fearfully made. May that be the testimony of every woman folk, oh God. In this place, in this church, in our community, in our nation, oh God. Father, Lord God Almighty, as we celebrate women today, Lord, you celebrate them, oh God. You honor them yourself, oh God. Lift them up, oh God. Be the glory and the lifter. The glory and the lifter. My sister, God is your glory glory and the lifter up of your head we bless you everlasting father thank you everlasting father glory be to your name and lord god almighty we ask you we mere humans celebrate women folk but you are the creator you are the one that created every single woman oh god lord release your power upon women folk today oh god be the glory and the lift up of their heads, O oh God. Fulfill every desire in every woman's heart this morning, O oh God. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Go on, let's celebrate all our women folk again. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. We're, we're really grateful to God. And, and, and this is not a cliche. We really are grateful to God for the role that all of you women play in our lives and particularly in, in the church community. And talking about the roles that you, we, you play, we would like to encourage you that the, the, the more you grow, the better the rest of us become. And I say this to encourage us concerning the conference that is coming up, but then I, I'd like you to please welcome um, 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 Mrs. Abisunua um, Oindamala as she comes, as she comes. Morning church and happy International Women's Day. Thank you so much Pastor Dega for those heartfelt prayers. I'm Oindamala and I'm here to speak with you about the Uncommon Woman Conference. So why should you attend this year's Uncommon Women Conference? Well, I have at least four reasons for you. First of all is the theme, audacious, living, fearless. In these times, it's so easy to give in to feelings of panic or fear. You hear of empty supermarket shelves, a lot of running around, people stocking up on essential goods. It's an atmosphere of fear that can easily grip us. But we need a reminder about how God wants us to live fearlessly and audaciously. So come and be equipped to do so. The second reason is the speakers. So beyond the fact that this year's lineup of speakers is absolutely amazing, what I've found is that no matter who graces the pulpit, at every Uncommon Woman Conference, God always speaks a word in due season to each and every one of his daughters. So come and experience that for yourself. Third reason to get your tickets today are the breakout sessions. They're a really enriching opportunity to dive into topics of interest in a practical way. And as you heard in Seven News, we really have something for everyone this year, so you don't want to miss out. The fourth reason is fellowship. At every Uncommon Women Conference, you really can develop and rekindle friendships over great food, 
in a spirit-filled atmosphere and exciting opportunities to shop in the mall. So go out to the desk after service and get your tickets. We hope you'll be there and be blessed. Thank you. Go on, let's appreciate Oinda Mola. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to please welcome Pastor Denrele as she comes. Go on, let's appreciate Pastor Denrele. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good morning, church. Good morning. It's a beautiful day. It's International Women's Day. I knew I was going to say this. I'm happy to be a woman. <laughs> um, if there's anything like coming back again, I don't know if there's anything like that. I will still want to come back a woman. So, men, sorry, I do not want to be a woman. <laughs> I do not want to be a man. <laughs> Amen, amen. I think that was one man praying for me to make that. But you know, I do not want to be a man. And I say it confidently this morning. This morning, um, on a more serious note, I know that we all know what has been going on in the country, in the nations of the world, about the coronavirus outbreak. It's a word some people don't even want to mention because they think that if they mention it, they will catch the virus. It's affecting thousands of people around the world, including the United Kingdom. It's causing a lot of chaos, a lot of confusion, fear, panic, anxiety, worry. A lot of people are ill in hospital, in isolation in their homes, lots of chaos. But before I go on, I'm going to ask that we show a video, and then I'll go on from there. COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by a new coronavirus introduced to humans for the first time. It is spread from person to person, mainly through the droplets produced when an infected person speaks, coughs, or sneezes. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby. These droplets are too heavy to travel far in the air. They only travel approximately one meter and quickly settle on surfaces. This is the reason person-to-person -person spread is happening mainly between close contacts. The exact time that the virus can survive on surfaces is not yet known. So it is wise to clean surfaces regularly, particularly in the vicinity of people infected with COVID-19. Hands touch many surfaces, which can be contaminated with the virus. You should therefore avoid touching your eyes, nose or mouth, since contaminated hands can transfer the virus from the surface to yourself. When coughing or sneezing, cover your mouth and nose with the bend of your elbow, or use a disposable tissue. If a tissue is used, discard it immediately into a closed bin. The most effective way to prevent the spread of the new coronavirus is to clean your hands frequently with an alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. This will eliminate the virus if it is on your hands. Stay healthy and prevent the spread of COVID-19. Thank you very much. That's information for every single one of us to hold on to, for ourselves and for our loved ones. And at this point, I wanted to say, in addition to all of that, please don't be offended today if people opt not to shake your hands or to hug you. I've actually had a few experiences this morning, so I've also done like, okay. And I saw somebody actually blow a kiss. It's fine, it's all good. Just make sure you wash your hands and make sure you use your alcohol rub, it's all good. But on an even more serious note, we need God in this time. How many people agree with me that we need God? We need God. We are desperate for his divine intervention concerning this outbreak of coronavirus. We are a praying community, and we serve a God that answers prayers. 
We have the weapon of prayer as believers, knowing that God for the first is our ever-present help in time of trouble. We know that God is our refuge. We know he's our strength. We know he can do all things. In this church in January, we began to, we, we started the year by fasting and praying, not just for ourselves. We prayed for our nation. We prayed for nations. And we stood on the word of God in Luke 1, 37. For with God, nothing is ever impossible. And no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. We are standing on this word that with God, nothing shall be impossible. Possible. We serve a sovereign God, a God who rules and reigns in the heavens and the earth. We serve an all-powerful God whose power no foe can withstand, withstand, including coronavirus. So I'm going to ask you to rise up this morning and join me as we pray for our country, for our families, for our friends, for nations all over the world. I don't know if you're like me. I am angry in my spirit. Uh, this morning as I was praying, I heard God say, these viruses need man to thrive. They need a body to thrive. They can't thrive on their own. They are viruses. Doesn't that remind you of those bodiless persons pastor was talking about? They need man to thrive. So we are going to pray this morning. Our first prayer point is that we're going to ask God for mercy. We're going to cry out for mercy on behalf of the nation. That Lord have mercy. You are a God of mercy. Let us begin to pray. Lord have mercy. Have mercy upon my family. Have mercy upon my church. Have mercy upon this nation. Have mercy upon the United Kingdom. Have mercy oh God. Upon nations oh God. Lord have have mercy. Let your mercy prevail. You are the God that delights to show mercy. You are God that endures in mercy. You choose to be merciful to whomever you want to be merciful to. You choose to be gracious unto whomever you want to be gracious to. Lord, show your mercy. Lord, show your mercy. We approach your throne room of grace this morning where you, we obtain mercy. Oh God, have mercy. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy, oh God. Have mercy upon nations. Have mercy upon families. Have mercy upon us as our individuals, oh God. Lord, have mercy. Let's begin to pray that God will show his power. The Bible tells us in Psalm 62, 11, that God is the all-powerful God. Let's begin to ask that God show his power. Let's begin to say it. God, show your power. Concerning this COVID-19, show your power. You have spoken once. Twice have I heard that power belongs to you. Lord, show your power. Lord, show your power. Let us begin to pray. Lord, heal the sick. Oh God, heal the sick. Heal the sick. You are Jehovah Rapha. Oh God of heaven, the King of the earth, the all powerful God, show your power. As we are praying, let us pray against the spirit of fear, the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of worry, the spirit of all those negative reports on the media that God will come through, that God will come through, their fear will go. He has not given us the spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1 7 says, He has given us the spirit of a sound mind. Oh God of heaven, we will not be fearful. That is not the spirit of you giving us as your children. Oh God of heaven, our eyes are on you. Our eyes are on you. This mountain of coronavirus, you are able to make it plain. Oh, you said in your word, who are you, a great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. This morning we declare, this morning we declare that it shall become a plain. That mountain shall become a plain in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to pray. Let's begin to rebuke the spirit of infirmity. Let's begin to rebuke the spirit of infirmity. The spirit of disease. Oh, Baba Sanda, speak to the atmosphere. If coronavirus exists in the atmosphere, speak the word of God.
poured into the atmosphere. Spirit of coronavirus, the Lord Himself rebuke you. Masandoro Boshikaka, Holy Baba Basanda, Holy Spirit, brood over the nations, brood over the United Kingdom, brood Holy Spirit. Let us begin to say that the way coronavirus came, the same way it would disappear in the name of Jesus. Masiko Prokoto, we speak into the atmosphere, we speak the word of God. And now let us begin to pray for divine protection for our family, for our friends, for our loved ones. The Bible tells us in Psalm 91 verses 9 to 11 that because you have met the Lord who is your refuge, even the most are your dwelling place, no evil shall be for you. Nor shall any plague come near to your dwelling place, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Let us begin to pray for divine protection, that no evil will befall us, no plague will come near our dwelling places, no plague will come near our homes, no plague will come near our church, no plague will come near this nation. The Lord he will send forth his angels, he will send up his army of angels, all he cast on honorable to take charge in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to pray this morning for wisdom, 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 knowledge, understanding for all the healthcare workers, for all the research scientists, for all those who are in charge, who are at the front line of this COVID-19 outbreak, that God will enable them, that God will give them wisdom. Isaiah 11 2 says, oh, the spirit of the Lord will rest upon them. The spirit of wisdom will rest upon them. The spirit of knowledge will rest upon them. The spirit of understanding will rest upon them. Oh, let us begin to bring our prayers to an end. Let's begin to thank God for answered prayers. We are people of faith. We pray and we believe. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. We say thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, O oh God. And so, Father, it's all in your hands. You will see us through. We are victorious. Even over coronavirus, we are victorious. We declare it, we claim it in the name of Jesus. Thank you all for a coronavirus-free world. Thank you for a coronavirus-free United Kingdom in the name of Jesus. Lord, we trust in our prayers. We believe, oh God, that the numbers will begin to go down in the name of Jesus. We declare it into the atmosphere that coronavirus, you dissipate, you disintegrate, you disappear in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. Thank you, Father. You alone are worthy, Lord, to be praised and adored. You alone are worthy.
for you alone are worthy to be praised, to be adored, to be glorified. You are a faithful God. Amen. Please be seated. Holy Spirit of the living God, I pray this morning that you speak through me. I surrender myself to you. Please put your words in my tongue. Give me divine utterance. You are the Lord who give human beings their mouths and make the one heart of hearing to hear. You are the God who makes the blind to see. Help me to speak and teach what you want to say so that ears will hear, eyes will see, the oppressed will go free and your name will be glorified. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be sharing today on my time and season of breakthrough. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes 3.1, I'm going to be using the amplified version of the Bible. There's a season, a time appointed for everything and a time for every delight, an event or purpose under heaven. So we read that there's a time and there's a season. One of the words that came during the 21 days of fast, one of the scriptures we stood on, was Psalm 102.13 in the Amplified Version. And I read, You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to be gracious and show, have, show favor to her. Yes, the appointed time, the moment designated, has come. Has come. We hear that is a time of God's grace, an appointed time, a time of favor, a moment designated. What does breakthrough really mean? What does it mean? I checked the dictionary. It's a sudden, dramatic, important discovery or development. A breakthrough in, for example, the research into COVID-19 by the grace of God. Instance of achieving success in a particular sphere or activity, activity, a notable success, an act or instance of moving through or beyond an obstacle. That was the dictionary definition. Let me give you my definition. It is a time when there has been a struggle, a delay, a hold up, a block, a stagnation, a barrier, a wall, a mountain, and now there is a resolution. It's about breaking through or going through a fortification. I want to declare over somebody this morning that this is your time of absolute and complete resolution. Amen. Time to separate you, to prefer you, to honor you, to celebrate you, to recognize you. Your time of lifting is now. Breakthrough to go through. You will go through in Jesus' name. Amen. It is your time and season to overcome, to achieve, to advance, to enhance, to improve and to change. It's your time and season of victory. It's your time and season of fruitfulness. It's your time and season of increase. It's your time and season of lifting. It's your time and season of upgrade. What happens when you upgrade your phone? It's new. You have 10 cameras on one phone. I don't think they've started that yet, but I think there are three. Uh, therefore, two, three. See, I don't even have that yet. But by, I'm showing that another three, four years. There'll be 10 cameras uh, on the phone. Your time of upgrade is now. It is a time of quantum leap. <laughs> a time of quantum leap. You know, as I've prepared... I thought about 2020 as the leap year. 2020. You know, up from the 1st of January this year up until the 28th, nothing had really happened. Nothing had happened. It was a normal year. But then guess what? There was a shift. There was a shift because there was an extra day of the 29th of February. Something then moved. It had to move. Guess why? Because there was a shift in a day. So something had to move. March will be different for you in 2020 in the name of Jesus. From now on, 
you will celebrate your quantum leap in the mighty name of Jesus. You will live for joy. You will praise God endlessly. You will shout hallelujah this year in the name of Jesus. You will be loosed from everything that has held you bound. You will overcome. You will break through. There will be a movement in your life in the name of Jesus. It's the time of newness. And that newness will be evident in your life. People will see you and glorify God in a level. It is a time to let go of the past and live in the present, looking forward to the future. Remember that there is no future in the past. Remember, there is no future in the past because the past is gone. And as I thought about it, it's really true. The past is gone. So there is no future in the past. For me to look forward, I have to look at the present and look into the future. That is a word for somebody. The, word, the past is gone. Don't worry about yourself about it anymore. I had a few reminders as I prepared. I remembered the season, the seventh season. How many people remember the seventh season? In 2017, Pastor Agu brought a word about the seventh season. The sound of the abundance of rain. 1 Kings 18, 41 to 44. I'm not going to read it. But I want to assure you that now is the season. Appointed time is, time is now. We are in the season of bursting through. The clouds and the rain of revival has begun to fall in our lives. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the church, in the name of Jesus. In the nation, in the name of Jesus. How many people remember that time of the seventh season? Are we where we were then? Now? No, something has happened. There's been a shift. There's been a shift in our lives. There's been a shift in the church. I remembered another thing about when Reverend Yemi Adefarasi came. He shared on that word in Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. And I want to say to, something that, to somebody that we are in the middle of something we have never experienced before. And I want somebody to believe that in their heart. That you are in the middle of something that you have never experienced before. It is a good thing though. It is a very good thing in the name of Jesus. I also remembered, I don't know why God took me there, to a prophecy by Sharon Stone. It was one of the apostles of God programs and it was a day nine if I remember and she said it is a new day a new favor for the church and she will, we should not be weary in doing good because in due time we will reap if we faint not and so I want to say to somebody that breakthrough is about rising above the negatives the criticisms the failures, the reproaches, the shame, the storms. It's about shining through the past and living like God intended, knowing we can no longer be bound by the past. And then that takes me to January 2020. We had a season of fasting and prayer. 21 days, 40 days for some of us. And we stood of that word in Luke 137. Have you forgotten already? That God has assured us that this year with him, nothing shall be impossible. Luke 1, 37. As I prepared, I thought, look, if I don't share the scriptures with you, you might think that I didn't prepare properly. So I wanted to give you some examples of people that broke through in the Bible. I picked on a woman, a man and a woman. David is the man I chose to talk about. You know, David went through a lot of issues, many barriers, many walls in his way. I'm going to read my opening scripture from 1 Chronicles 14, 8 to 11 in the Amplified Classic Version. 1 Chronicles 14, 8 to 11 in the Amplified Classic Version. And when the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over Israel, they all went up to seek David, and he heard of it and went out before them. Now the Philistines had come and made a raid in the valley of Raphaim. David asked God, shall I go up against the Philistines? Question. Will, I, will you deliver them into my hand? Question. And the Lord said, go up. I will deliver them into your hand. So Israel came up to Baal Perazim, and David smote the Philistines there. Then David said, God has broken my enemies 
my hand like the bursting forth of waters. Therefore, they call the name of that place Baal Perazim, the Lord of breaking through. You know, as I prepared IBK, I thought about you singing that song. I don't know if this God has told you in your spirit. God of the breakthrough. You, you like that song. You always sing it. You know, the God of the breakthrough. This is where it came from. The God of the breakthrough. The God of the breakthrough. Somebody say with me, the God of the breakthrough. God of the breakthrough. There was a war in the battle. Uh, there was a battle in the valley of Raphaim. By the way, that valley is also called the valley of giants or the valley of trouble. I don't know what valley you are in today. What valley you are in. I've come to tell you that the same way David inquired of the Lord and God, he received instruction, the Lord will tell you what to do and he will, will be victorious in the name of Jesus. I want to say to you, do not worry because the battle belongs to the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Interestingly, as the story continues, the Philistines did not give up. So David won the battle by the power of God, and then they came again. And I'm going to pick that story again from verse 13 to 17. Let's read. And the Philistines again made a raid in the valley, and David inquired again of God. And God said to him, do not go up after them. Turn away from them and come around upon them over opposite the mulberry trees. And when you hear a sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry or balsam trees, then go out to battle, for God has gone out before you to smite the Philistine host. So David did as God commanded him, and they smote the army of the Philistines from Gibeon even to Gaza. And the fame of David went out into the land, and the Lord brought the fear of him upon them nations. The Philistines tried again. The enemies tried again. David inquired of the Lord. He gave him new, God gave him new strategies, new instructions. And guess what happened? He won the victory again. I want to say to you that the Lord will empower you. He will give you new strategies. He will give you new instructions. He will give you fresh visions. He will give you a sharper vision in the name of Jesus. And I want to declare over you that your fame will spread throughout the nation in the mighty name of Jesus. As I thought about it, I thought about the battle happening in the valley. But the battle always happened in the valley so that you can move up to the mountain top. <laughs> but to move up to the mountain top, what do you need to do? You need to climb. But I want to say to you that the climbing action is not your own. God says today, today is your day of breakthrough. He will move you to the mountain top in the name of Jesus. If you go back to that scripture, God said, I have gone ahead of you. Don't go that way I thought you in the past. This is a new thing I'm doing. I have gone ahead of it. And so shall it be for you in the name of Jesus. You will break through like a child breaks through the membrane of a woman in labor. So shall your portion be in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The second person I thought about to share with you is Esther. You know, the book of Esther is one of my favorite books in the Bible. It is easily one of my favorite ones. I tend to read the book of Esther from start to finish in one sitting. It comes highly recommended if you've never read it. I want to actually ask, how many people have read the book of Esther? Oh, most people. So you do know the story. You see, we see a story here of God's favor, of his anointed or chosen one. We see a separation of a young girl for the purposes of God. We see boldness of a young girl to approach the king. We see faith. We see determination. We see God's divine wisdom. And I could go on and on. But I just wanted to read a part of the story. I'm going to pick it from Esther's 5, 1 to 8. Esther's 5, 1 to 8. If you've never read Esther's before, let this be your read for this week. You will really enjoy it and come and thank me next week when you see me. <laughs> of, on the third day of the fast, Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the king's 
palace opposite his throne room. The king was sitting on his royal throne, facing the main entrance of the palace. When the king saw Esther, the queen standing in the court, she found favor in his sight. And the king extended to her the golden scepter, which was in his hand. May the king ex extend his golden scepter towards you today in the name of Jesus. So Esther approached and touched the top of the scepter. Then the king said to her, what is troubling you, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given to you up to the half of the kingdom. Esther said, if it pleases the king, may the king and Haman come this day to the banquet that I have prepared for him. Then the king said, bring Haman quickly so, so that we may do as Esther says. So the king and Haman came to the banquet which Esther had prepared. As they drank their wine at the banquet, the king said to Esther, what is your petition? It shall be granted to you. And what is your request? Even to half of the kingdom it shall be done. Then Esther replied, my petition and my request is this. If I have found favor in the the sight of the king and it is and it pleases the king to grant my petition and to do as I request may the king and Haman come to the banquet that I prepare for them tomorrow I will do as the king says and express my request just a bit of background to that for those who haven't read the book of Esther Esther was selected as the queen amongst many I'm just going to quickly go through that and then there was uh, um, a man there called Haman. May all the Hamans in your life die today in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, they, uh, <laughs> I, I ha you know, the, that's righteous indignation. How can somebody decide to wipe out a whole nation? That was the story. This Haman, so you wouldn't understand why I just pray that prayer. He decided one man wanted to wipe out a whole nation. How can? What? How? So again, I pray that everything troubling you that resembles a Haman will die in the name of Jesus. If you like, don't say amen. I'm saying amen. So that was the story. God had now given Esther the wisdom as to know what to do. I'm going to pick up the story again in Esther 7. I'm going to read verse 1 to 5 in the Amplified Version. So the king and Haman came to drink wine with Esther the queen. And the king said to Esther on the second day also as they drank their wine, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted to you. And what is your request? Even to half of the kingdom it shall be done. Then Queen Esther replied, If I have found favor in your sight, O queen, O king, and it pleases the king, let my life be spared as my petition and my people be spared as my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, killed and wiped out of existence. Now, if we had only been sold as slaves, men and women, I would have remained silent. For our hardship would not be sufficient to burden the king by even mentioning it. Then King Ahasuerus asked Queen Esther, who is he? And where is he who dares to do such a thing? Esther said, an adversary and an enemy is Haman, this evil man. Then Haman became terrified before the king and the queen. Can you see why I prayed that prayer? An adversary, an enemy, the enemy of your soul, the enemy of your body, the enemy of the spirit, the enemy against us. The Bible says is the one, the evil man. I pray against every evil man in your life. They will bow to the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. So you know the rest of the story. If you don't know the rest of the story, I'll ask you to read. But just to give you a hint so that it's sweet. Haman was, Haman died. He was hanged. That is the story. I hope I haven't spoiled you. You know how you're trying to watch a film and somebody tells you the story before you watch. Sorry, but you still need to read the story. But I wanted to say that in talking about the season and time of breakthrough, Esther and the Jews broke through. You know, the Hebrew word for breakthrough is perez. It means to rupture, to shatter, to break, to tear. I declare that the favor that was on Esther will be upon you. The victorious spirit that was on Esther and the Jews is upon you. The spirit of boldness that was on Esther is upon you. You will have a breakthrough against every spirit of Haman and you will overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. So how can we have a breakthrough? 
From the stories above, we can see many things. You know, Esther had to fast and pray with the Jews. We can fast, we can pray, we can inquire of the Lord. We can receive wisdom, instructions, and strategies. In addition, I have eight points of my own that has helped me in the journey of breaking through. I want to share with you that I have also broken through in many areas of my life. You know, there was a time in my life when I was a shadow of myself. <laughs> I felt so much rejection. I felt so much like I don't belong. So much shame. <laughs> I went through a season of financial lack. I lived on handouts, believe it or not. I, in fact, this morning as I prepared, <laughs> I don't know if Pastor Baje is watching, he has this habit of asking me, do you have an offering? If we are sitting together, maybe at a redeem meeting, say, do you have an offering? And then I'll look away. And you just put something in an envelope and give it to me. You know, now I have an offering. When we go to those meetings and he says, do you have an offering? I humbly accept it because I remember where I was coming from. So I still accept his offering, even though I can give an offering. I believe that's humility, but I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. But on a more serious note, I went through it. I went through a season of divorce, a season of marriage breakdown. I had a sense of failure. I felt that the whole world, my whole world had crumbled. My whole world. <laughs> but guess what? I began to break through. I began to break through. I'm still not completely there, but I can assure you, I am testifying that I am almost there. And I will break through. And I pray over you that you will break through in the name of Jesus. Let me share quickly a few things that has helped me. I did not give up. I kept knocking. I kept asking. I kept seeking. I was persistent in prayer. For the people that know me, when they say pray, I pray. When they say fast, I fast. Even when they don't say fast, I fast. I was just there, knocking, asking God, when are you going to deliver me? When am I going to break through? If you want a scripture for that, it's Luke 18, 1 to 8. The story of the persistent widow. The second thing that helped me was because was I, I continued to do good. What do I mean by that? I continued to go. That's why the pain, that's why the tears, that's why my heart, I was sacrificing. I was giving. I was being kind. I was just continuing in the word of the Lord. I continued with loving my neighbor. I tried. It's not easy, but I tried. I, I, the Bible says, love your neighbor and, and, and pray for those who persecute you. I was loving my enemies. I was praying for those who persecuted me. I was just going. The third thing, if you want a scripture before I go on, is Matthew 5, 43 to 44. I'm not going to read that. The third thing was I started to ask God for the spirit of faith. Spirit of faith. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, that if without faith, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. I began to work on my faith. That, Lord, let me trust in you. Let me have faith. The Bible says if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to a mountain to move and it will move. Mark eleven twenty three 23 to 24. I began to think, God, there must be a faith that is bigger than a faith. There must be another level of faith. And I just remember now, the Holy Spirit just dropped it in my spirit that I've actually preached a message on another level of faith before as I was in that journey. I just trusted God with this faith. That was the third thing. I'm going to give you um, another scripture, Matthew 17, 20, in the Passion Translation, but I'm not going to read it. The fourth point was, I, was, I started taking risk. Naturally, I am not a risk taker. 
<laughs> I'm not a risk taker at all. I shy away from taking risks. But I, I was willing to take risks. I started to attempt to do some things new, new things. You know, breakthrough is about newness. Esther took a risk by approaching the king uninvited. She risked her life. Standing up for Christ at the risk of great personal loss is something that we all have to do. You know, ladies, as it's International Women's Day, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll talk about the ladies. You know, giving up on that relationship because it does not glorify God is a risk, but it will lead to your breakthrough. You know, in the name of Jesus. A risk that may be what your greater good. Like Esther said, if I perish, I perish. That's in Esther's 4 from 12 to 17. Those were her words. She said, if I perish, I perish. That was what she said to her uncle. I came across a quote as I prepared. And I read, the person who risks nothing has nothing, is nothing and becomes nothing. The person who risks nothing has nothing, is nothing and becomes nothing. Number five, trust in God and his will. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, a scripture we all know. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. I started to trust God. In the middle of it, I started to tr trust God and breakthrough came. The sixth thing I did was I, I continued to delight myself in the Lord, to please the Lord, to find pleasure in him, to enjoy his presence, to enjoy his word, to enjoy his, his help, you know, the help of the Holy Spirit, to enjoy the fact that he's my strength, he's my all in all. He's my Lord, he's my, he's my merciful God, my gracious God. He said when we delight ourselves in him, he will give us the desires of our hearts. Psalm 37 verse 4. The next point I'm going to mention, that's number 7. I began to, I started to learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit. That was the most difficult one. You know, to stop and listen to the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is speaking all the time, giving instruction, giving strategies, giving plans. You know, the scripture that dropped in my spirit for this, and I'm going to read this, is in John 16, 13. John 16, 13. But when he, the spirit of truth, the truth-giving spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth, the whole full truth. For he will not speak his own message on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. He will give the message that has been given to him, and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. Stop, learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit. And the eighth point is, I suppose, Probably most, I'm trying to think which was more difficult, seven or eight, they were equally difficult. <laughs> Learning to wait for God for that breakthrough. Learning to wait for God for the breakthrough. Because I knew it would come, but I didn't know when it would come. Perhaps somebody is listening to me and they're thinking, Pastor, you do not understand. I have been waiting for long. Trust me, I waited for long too. But it would come. It would come. I say it again. It would come. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah 64, 3 to 4. Isaiah 64, 3 to 4. And I read the Amplified Version. When you did awesome and amazing things which we did not expect, you came down at sea near the mountains, quaked at your presence. For from days of old, no one has heard, nor has ear perceived, nor has the eye seen a God beside you, who walks and acts in behalf of the one who gladly waits for him. May you gladly wait for the Lord. May patience, the spirit of patience be upon you right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. As a roundup, I have a few questions to ask you. What is in the way of your fulfillment or success? What is blocking your path of destiny? What is that obstacle? Can you identify it? What is making you afraid? What is making you shake? What is depriving you of joy or laughter or happiness? 
What is causing you shame and reproach? What is that thing that is making you walk with your head bowed low? What is preventing you from moving forward? What is that invisible force you can't explain to anyone? But you know, but you know. What is that thing that is robbing you of honor? What does that cage that you are in look like? What is that wall, that barrier, that enemy that the enemy is using to hold you down? The Bible tells us in Psalm 42, 5, Psalm 42, 5, Why are you in despair, O my soul? Why have you become restless and disturbed within me? Hope in God and wait expectantly for him. I shall yet again praise him for the help of his presence. If you have answers to any of these questions, then you need a breakthrough. Like I said earlier, I have broken through in many areas of my life, but I still need a breakthrough. I went through a season of printing scriptures and putting it on my fridge just to remind me that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes <laughs> in the morning. It was my favorite scripture. If for those who have known me for a very long time, it was my email address, joycomet at hotmail. <laughs> I no longer use that email address, just in case you're trying to send me an email after the message. God has come through for me. I'm saying it's a God has come through for me. I have broken through, and so shall you break through in the name of Jesus. I'll ask you to please rise up this morning. What is disturbing you? What is it? Is it your finances not adding up? Are you working nine to five, nine to nine, nine to midnight, and the, your, 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 finance, your finances are like basket with holes? Is it your troubled marriage, challenging marriage, disintegrative marriage? Are you enduring that marriage instead of enjoying it? Is it your stagnation, stagnation in your career, in your academic life? Is it that driving lesson or driving test that you have constantly failed? What is disturbing you? What is it? Is it that exam, that accountancy exam that you have failed and failed and you're thinking there will no be breakthrough? I've come, I have good news for you. You will break through from today in the name of Jesus. What is that thing that is causing you? What is that habit? What is that addiction? What is that sexual perversion? That pornography? The lies of the enemy that he keeps feeding into your spirit? What is that addiction? What is that drug addiction? What is it? What's that emotional pain, fear, sorrow, grieving? Today I declare over you that you will laugh deep belly laughter in place of sorrow in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to begin to thank God for this morning because we're going to pray a few prayer points this morning. I want us to begin to thank God that Lord I have heard you. I trust in your breakthrough. I trust that you are able to break through. You are the God of the breakthrough. Oh God of heaven. I thank you. I thank you oh God for to this year oh God. From now on I know I will live for joy. From now on I know I will break through. I will break through into my season of fulfillment. I will break into my season of fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray this morning that we will break through. We will break through in our spiritual lives. We will break through in our bodies, in our bodies. Perhaps your body is wrapped with illness today. Begin to pray to God. The God of the breakthrough is here. The God of the breakthrough is here. Rabba Baba Ye, Rebo Shakabra, O Rabba Baba Sanda, Mariko Toro Bobo Bobo, Reka Kaka Kaka, Robo Shaka Broko Koko, O Koko Shanda Rabba Ye, Meke Broko To, Madando Robo, O Rabba Baba Ye. Pray, pray, pray that you will break through physically. Pray that you will break through emotionally. Pray that you will break through. Oh, la baba sana. Ika kaka That sadness will turn to joy. Masete teke. Rebo bo bo bo. Rebo ba 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 ba. Rebo ba ba ba. Rebo bo bo sondo. Makashe koko ko. Rebo bo bo shanda. Oh, la baba sana. Depression gives way. Oppression gives way. Masando robobo. Anxiety gives way. Fear gives way. Sadness gives way. Disease gives way. Illness gives way. Robobo shanda. Guilt gives way. Moto shoko robobo. Marando robobo. Tell God what you want. Tell God the area you want a breakthrough in. He's here. Borobobo. Borobobo. Is it that challenging child? Ah, there is a breakthrough. Masandoro, oh la ba 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 ye, moro, moro shakabre, moro toto lo bo, oh, oh kajata la ye, moro bo bo bo, ke ke ke, moro basa. 
the breakthrough and we break through in the name of Jesus. Lord, in this nation, oh God, we break through. Revival comes in the mighty name of Jesus. We break through, oh God. Souls are saved, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we break through. We break through. There's a spiritual breakthrough in our lives, oh God. Everything that has held us bound begins to go. Begins to go in the name of Jesus. We are released from every oppressive power of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, we destroy every negative power over us because we have broken through. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Before we go, or maybe before I sit down, I just want to give somebody an opportunity for a spiritual breakthrough. You've never given your life to Christ before. You don't even know this God of the breakthrough. You have no idea. Please be seated. You have no idea what I am talking about. It will be difficult for you to walk this journey that I have described to you that I have walked. Because you have to know the God of the breakthrough to walk this journey. If you've never given your life to Christ before, you have not even started this journey with the God of the breakthrough. Just wave your hands at me. Just All I need is a wave and somebody will put a card in your heart. You've never ever done this before. You've never given your life to Christ. Just wave your hand. Thank you, Lord. The second altar call that I want to make this morning is for you have given your life to Christ, but you have gone back to doing the things that you really shouldn't be doing and this morning you want to make amends you want to come back to God if you're in that category just wave your hands at me and somebody will come to you or um, put a card in your hand is there anybody saying there's somebody there please just put a card in our hand and I'll get someone to come and talk to her you you've never you've done this there's another person there just wave your hands at me just do it and just Put the enemy to shame this morning. Just put the enemy to shame. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. There's somebody on my left and there's somebody on my right. Dapo, there's somebody here. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord will honor you. The Lord will give you a breakthrough, even as you've obeyed him this morning. And the third altar call that I would like to make, last one, is that I mentioned so many cases so many cases of areas where you need a breakthrough. If any of those ones apply to you, I would like you to stand where you are. You don't need to come forward. Just stand. Obviously, nobody will know what it is. Just stand. Just stand where you are. In that area that you need, you know that, whoa, that resonated with me. Ah, definitely need a breakthrough in that area. Oh, she mentioned my case. I want you to begin to pray. You know, we are people of faith. <laughs> you know, one of the things I said is that I asked God for special faith. I want us to, you to begin to pray that today will not be an ordinary day in my life. Today will be my day of breakthrough over that physical illness. Today will be my day of breakthrough. Rebo Kosanda. I want you to lift your voices and begin to pray. You know your situation. You know that area. You know that thing that is disturbing you. You know that force that is holding you back. Just begin to pray. Oh God of the breakthrough, come through for us today. Oh you have promised us. You said with you nothing shall
shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. Rabba Shando Robobo. Rabba Bobo Sando Robobo Soto Roboye. Thank you, Father Lord God Almighty. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Hallelujah. Go on, let's appreciate God this morning. Hallelujah. You know, I, I, um, you know that the, actually, let me put it personally. I'm sitting down there and listening to the Word of God. And I had an experience, which is what I was trying to describe earlier, but I pray you had the same experience. And what was the experience that I had? You know, when you hear a word, and like the Bible says, the baby jumps in your belly. I don't know how many people had babies jump in their bellies. But you know why the baby jumped in my belly? Because I know this is the season of my breakthrough. And ladies and gentlemen, I know of a certain that as a church, as a people of God, this is our season of breakthrough. Every word that God has spoken over our lives, over this church, believe me, it will not return to God void. And I sense in my spirit that everything, the prayers we've been praying, not just since January, last year, the year before, this is the season of the breakthrough. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can I say something to somebody, ladies and gentlemen? Do you believe that your future is going to be better than your past? <laughs> believe me, your future is going to be better than your past. You know, Pastor Daryl said something. She said, she said, your future is not in your past. Can I just uh, adulterate that a little? The past is good for you to learn from your mistakes. But please don't dwell in your past. Because God is waiting in your future. And you know what the word of God says concerning your future? It says he will give you an expected end and a future. Can somebody appreciate God? Your future, your future will be better, better than your past. In the mighty name of Jesus. And you know, I, I, I love it when a child of God submits themselves to hear the spirit of God so they can deliver the word of God. Please appreciate Pastor Dan really. You know, I, I, I sat there, and I'll say this very quickly. Um, one of the things that was critical in the, I'm so many things that she shared with, with us that are very, very important, the story of Esther. But, you know, go and read the story of Esther over again. It'll challenge you. But the, what I think was the core scripture in 1 Chronicles 14, where David broke through. I felt the Spirit of God say, you know, learn from the principle. The enemy surrounded David as the enemy surrounds you and I. And then David inquired of the Lord, what should I do? And then God told him and he did what he did. That's how he got the breakthrough. Many times, ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. God tells us what we should do. We don't do. And so I sat down there because we're going to receive our offering now. This is what God told me. That Pastor Agua has preached about financial breakthrough many times, but people still do not do what God has told them to do. Ladies and gentlemen, if somebody's ready, let us do what God has told us to do. Let us receive our tithes and our offering. Let's honor God with what he first gave us. You know, so many things we've been taught over the years. But the person that gets a breakthrough is the person who obeys the word of God, obedience to the word of God. Let us serve God. Let's honor God with our tithes, with our offering. A tithe is 10% of what God has given you and I. It is an acknowledgement that whatever you have, ladies and gentlemen, it is from God. And it is putting God first before everything else. Before the bills, yes, we're faced with bills and all that. But it's saying, Lord, you are the owner of my finances, and it is you that is going to bring a breakthrough. I could go on and on, ladies and gentlemen, but let's just honor God this morning with that title offering. You want to prepare? 
If you are worshipping with us for the first time, please, we always say never give by compulsion. Give with understanding. And with that understanding comes the cheerful spirit that God encourages us to come to Him with our offering. May God cause a breakthrough in your finances, in my finances, in Jesus' name. Let's rise up as we worship God with our tithes and with our offerings. With this song, we declare that we have been set free and we have our breakthroughs. Every child of God has a divine right to the breakthrough that Christ won on the cross of Calvary. And you unravel me with the melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone can somebody testify I'm no longer I'm no longer slave oh no 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 I am a child of God no longer entrapped enslaved no longer, no longer in depression no longer in a place of destitute I am a child of God I am a child from my mother's womb, from my mother's womb, the breakthrough has been chosen. Love has called my name. Love has called my name. I've been born again. I've been born again into a family. Your blood flows through my veins. Father, thank you for being our God and our Father. Thank you that we are your children, O oh God. May your name be glorified in all of our lives. Thank you for your breakthrough, O oh God. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in God's wonderful presence. Just a few things, please, to reiterate 
as we go this morning. Um, as we celebrate women today, uh, please, this call is particularly for men. Um, we, we, not, we not only just celebrate women, but we are there. Part of our role is to stand and support women, particularly in this church community as we grow together. And I say this in the context of the Uncommon Women Conference that's coming up. We, we've, we've talked about this over the last few weeks. Uh, each time either the women have a conference, we call on men to please support and volunteer so the women can give themselves to, to, to listening to the word and being transformed by the word. In the same way that when we have the men's conference, the women very graciously stand up and volunteer and support us. So please, I'd like to make a special call for every single man, every single man, please. Over the three-day period, we, we can give a few hours, we can give a day uh, to just support. The conference starts from Thursday till Saturday, and uh, there are opportunities to just lend ourselves in various ways. Now, what we've been asked to do, gentlemen, if you please pay attention for a, a few minutes, um, is actually very straightforward, that we please go on to the website of the Uncommon Women Conference, www.uncommonwomenconference.co.uk. And then when we click on the, on the site, and it opens up, on the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a bar that says volunteers. If you click on that bar that says volunteers, it will scroll up and come up with male volunteers. And since we're men, we are clicking that box that says male volunteers. When that comes up, just click one, as in you are one person that wants to volunteer, and then it will give you options of areas where you can volunteer. It's as simple as that. The alternative is to, to uh, go, the, yeah, there's a barcode there, um, or QR code, I beg your pardon, that we can take a picture, and then you go straight into the site. And uh, please, gentlemen, the women are looking up to us. Without our support, it'll be challenging for them to have a meaningful conference because we want them all to participate. So please, we're hoping and relying on every man in the house to give their support. Any one of the three days, you can do two days, you can do one day, you can do three days. And God bless you as you do this. And then um, we want to thank those who, um, in response to the, the, the announcement last week, have offered to either become hosts of our connect groups or to be leaders of our connect groups. Just to clarify, the training for those who've given their time, who, who said they'd like to be host or, or leaders, will be this afternoon from 11.30 um, in the boardroom. If you didn't put up your name, if you didn't put down your name, I beg your pardon, but you'd like to either give up your house as a, as, as a, as a, as a venue for connect group meetings, or you'd like to lead a connect group, you're welcome to join them immediately after the service from 11.30 in the boardroom. And please don't forget, we continue to ask each one of you to be part of our connect groups. If you don't have a connect group where you're going, where you're learning with other people, breaking down the word, uh, breaking down the sermon as we've heard today, there are tables out in the foyer uh, for you to please put down your, your name. And then thirdly, uh, this is very important, next week Monday, not tomorrow the 9th, next week the 16th of uh, March, we have a special parents round table. We do this every now and then where we invite parents to please come together where we have round table discussions about becoming responsible parents, how we bring up our children particularly. Now the topic for next week Sunday, next week Monday, I beg your pardon, um, is actually quite important for every single one of us that's a parent. And it's to do with how we create the environment for our young people particularly to connect with God. I love the narrative where it says, for a lot of well-meaning parents, you know, we want our children, particularly the youth, to connect with God, to find God. But sometimes we end up being the obstacles uh, without realizing so in the way that we go about it. And we want to come together to say, how can we not be obstacles? How can we allow God to break through in their lives? So please, Monday the 16th of March, 7 p.m. in the chapel, um, you're welcome to come. And please don't forget, 
we continue to seek God in prayer. It's critical we're continuously praying. Um, and uh, our prayer meeting is Tuesday, 7 p.m., the upper room com- um, um, a prayer meeting in the chapel every Tuesday from 7 p.m. And uh, we've got a church of his vacancy, please, for a French-speaking administrative assistant for our French church. If you are interested, please send an email to HR. Um, and then please, let's also look forward to the Festival of Life coming up um, on the 10th of April. It's a special one because it's on Easter Friday. First time we've ever had a f- uh, Festival of Life on Easter Friday. Promises to be special. And then the following day, the 11th of of um, April, which is Easter Saturday, we have a special FOL youth event called the Flame Event. We'll talk a bit more about those in the days to come. Amen. And then lastly, just to uh, reiterate, um, a lot has been said about the, what is going on, what is fast becoming a pandemic with the COVID virus and, and, and all. And uh, the information we've heard is factual in the sense that, yes, there's a virus that we gather is more virulent than usual. But then, please, as we're careful, as we're mindful, the one thing we must not become is become fearful. You know, the one tool, and please, as Christians, never forget this, the one tool Satan always uses is fear. And he uses his courts in various ways to bring about fear. I've been saying to a number of people, yes, there is a virulent thing going on, but ladies and gentlemen, it's been banded a lot more than it should. Do you know, I I actually called one of the healthcare team uh, um, during the service just to confirm this. Do you know that there there, there are more mortalities from the common flu than from the COVID virus that people are shouting about? Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't be mindful and be careful and do what we're supposed to do. Wash your hands, you know, be careful if you're coughing, you know, be careful you're not coughing into people's faces and all that. But please let us not give way to fear uh, so that we now become paralyzed. Ladies and gentlemen, they said there are no more uh, toilet papers in supermarkets because people, 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 oh God. God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us a spirit of power, of love and a sound mind. Ladies and gentlemen, let us have a sound mind. Is, is this clear? And then, of course, we continue to pray. You know, we were praying this morning. Guess what? The scripture of God dropped in my spirit, Psalm 103. It says in verse 2, I will praise you, O Lord my God. I will not forget your benefits. In verse 3, it says, You forgive all our sins and you heal all our diseases. COVID 19, God will heal, ladies and gentlemen. So let's put things in perspective and not be ignorant. Last thing, and I'll say, you know, we've just come back from the the Solemn Assembly uh, uh, Convention in Lagos. Others will be coming back. God will bring them back safely. Pastor Batch, Pastor Mark, Pastor Pastor Marceline, God will bring them back safely. The theme of the Solemn Assembly was let there be light. You know what God said to me? That fear, ignorance is darkness. The light of God will, sh- he will chase the, the, the darkness away. So my brother, my sister, yes, um, you may want to be careful. You don't want to shake somebody. Be, you know what? I will hug and shake all the people that I need to. The power of God in me. It, so, sorry, my wife. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, please be, be careful. Don't. <laughs> Let's rise to our feet. Sorry, before we rise to our feet, is there anybody worshiping with us for the first time? If it's your first time in Jesus' house, we would like to appreciate your coming. Uh, We don't take your coming for granted. Can you please wave at me if it's your first time in Jesus' house? Go on, church. Let's appreciate all all our new guests. God bless you. Go go on, let's appreciate them as as they go. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's rise up to our feet as we end the service. Thank you, Father. Lord, we honor you this morning. 
and we're grateful for your goodness towards us. Thank you for your word, O oh God, to encourage us this morning that you are the God of the breakthrough, that you are constantly walking on our behalf, O oh God. And Father, I pray for every single one in this church community, those watching online, those that are here, that regardless of where we are, the same way you broke through for David, the same way you broke through for Pastor Demile in the way she sh shared and encouraged us, you'll break through for every single one of us, O oh God. And Father, Lord God Almighty, we pray once again, and we bring this affliction um, in the form of the virus that is ravaging, everlasting, Father. Let your light chase out darkness, O oh God. Father, let fear give way to faith, O oh God. Let your power, the Bible says in Acts 4.13, that the power of God to heal, heal the sick, it, 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 it went abroad. Lord, let your power manifest all over, O oh God. Father, for those who are afflicted, we pray for your healing, O oh God. Lord God Almighty, we hear, O oh God, that the elderly are the ones that are most at risk of this virus. And so we pray for our elderly, O oh God. We cover them with the blood of Jesus, O oh God. We declare that none, O oh God, shall fall victim or pray to this virus, O oh God. Lord, let there be healing, O oh God, as you have done in the past. Glory be to your name. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you and enjoy your breakthrough this week. God bless you.